Hi, this is Stu, and here we are at beautiful Purple Valley, of course. And again, I'm here with John Scott, and this is a, a little bit special because, okay, the interviews are great, but we really don't have time to go in depth. And talking off camera with John a lot, you know, he's got so much to share, and he was very keen as well on doing something a little bit more in depth and a little bit more special. So here we are, and we're going to be talking about. Um, Malas and the broader concept of Ashtanga and some of the teachings that John has got from Patabi Joyce that he wants to be able to share and pass down and that are very at the core of everything that we're trying to do. It's sort of Christmas time here even though it doesn't look like it of course because we're in India so it also comes with that sort of time of, of wanting to share more um, with others as well. So it's sort of a really quite nice time for us to be doing this and of course I'm, you know, it's fantastic that John is here with us and ready to do this for us and so I'm really just going to be here nodding and, <laughs> and absorbing as much as you guys really. So um, I'm going to just pass you over to John and he's going to tell us what we're going to be uh, talking about today. Uh, good morning and thank you Stu. <laughs> Lovely welcome again. Um, Stu might not just be <laughs> listening. <Oops. laughs> I might from time to time ask Stu to interact with me so it's a little bit like you as the audience interacting. It's very difficult just to, to write a book uh, you need the interaction of the listener or the observer or the, 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 the student that's going to, to use the material. All the work that I do is me trying to decipher, Stu, what I call the Guruji Sutras. Right. Uh, Guruji, in his simplicity, also in building up his language, his English language, he, things were very succinctly spoken, like a sutra. Um, and I've spent the last 30 years trying to decipher even the ones I, I learned from him right from the very beginning. Because some people have interpreted things differently, haven't they? As we've Absolutely. Because it's, it's up for interpretation, isn't it? And I so suppose. like a sutra, when it's unpacked, depending on the context that you put it in, then the words that we use will mean something different. And I think also when Guruji, he himself was saying, do your practice and all is coming, depending on the student he was talking to and the time that he was talking, yep. it could have meant something different each time. Yeah. Um, Guruji only ever wrote one book. And that book, as Stu said, is called the Yoga Mala. And so in the Yoga Mala, uh, it's hard to work through. My background, as some of you know, is industrial design, graphic design, product design. And because I have the ability, uh, being dyslexic and, you know, in the old days, a difficult learner, <laughs> because I was out of the box. I think I was in class D, D for <laughs> Thunderhead, I think, in the early days. <laughs> well, so for me, I like to make notes, draw notes, yeah. and work it out that way. And in the process of doing it, it, it helps me, and it seems to help others as well. So I wanted to start off with Mala. What, what does Mala actually mean? In the foreword of the book, Eddie Stern from New York, he gives a beautiful dedication to Guruji, saying that Guruji's work is as sacred as a prayer. Uh, it's a combination of the Pushpamala, which is the, the garland of roses or flowers or lotuses that you would adorn your deity or your yeah. loved one, or even welcoming a guest in. They're made up of flowers and bobbles, uh, nice, nice pattern of flowers. And then you have the Japa Mala, and the Japa Mala is used for the recitation of mantra. Mm. And in that case, each bead is to be counted and meditated on. And so Guruji uses the, the word Mala as a metaphor for Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga. That Eddie, Eddie put it so beautifully that each posture is like a flower a garland of flowers that are thread, uh, thread on the thread, thread on the th thread. Thread linked. on the thread. <laughs> that sounds crap. <laughs> linked all together on the thread of the breath. Threaded on the thread of the breath. <laughs> Easy for you to say. Yeah. And so how does that relate to vinyasa? 
because vinyasa also is a linking of asanas and each asana has you could say a number of beads or seeds to enter into the asana and to exit the asana and so uh, Guruji's metaphor of the Japa Mala Pushpa Mala comes together that the vinyasa are the beads of the Japa and the asana is the flower of the Pushpa. And so when I graphically uh, draw a mala, yeah. then it really helps myself and it'll help you as well, Stu, to understand <laughs> the concept that Guruji was trying to pass on. Yeah. That this practice is a dynamic meditation. It's a gross form of meditation that will learn us, uh, uh, teach us to, to learn how to eventually direct to more subtle uh, static meditations, which is sitting in Padmasana and focusing solely on the breath. Two people that inspired to me. Tim Miller once uh, expressed that just to sit and listen to your breath is very difficult. And we can lose interest so soon we can actually be uncomfortable in our body. And so vinyasa, by adding a breath movement, it makes it more interesting to concentrate on. Makes so sense. For, yeah, makes so a that's sense. a lovely one from Tim Miller. And then from, from Gretchen, who we were teaching with last week, she was uh, taking us through our um, calm staying meditation practice. And there was three three key points. One is to keep staring back to the breath. Two is to stay on the breath. And three is to intensify or to have greater interest. So for me, you know that I'm very much a Ashtanga Vinyasa, Vinyasa counter. counter I yeah. count the breath, Stu. Yeah. And so counting stares me back to the breath. Make noise, Guruji said, with sound. That keeps me staying on the breath. Yeah. So I count, I hear that breath, and I make it intensifying it, and interesting by moving synchronously with it. And there's a vinyasa for you. Yeah. That every breath is to be counted and meditated on. Every breath movement is therefore synchronous, mind, breath, body, all bound together. So let's see if we can bind that together. And so the metaphor that Guruji used, I've just got a lovely mala here. This is the classic mala, uh, the Japa mala. This has got 108 beads, or in this case, seeds. We won't count them, but if we were to count round this necklace, there's 108 plus this little pretty red one <laughs> and an extra one there. That's called the guru bead. Now, the guru bead I call the zero bead it tells you that you've made one loop of 108. So that's important to understand. So a mala has a string or a thread, beads, and each bead is to be counted and meditated on. It starts at zero and cycles around to zero. So in Patabi Joyce's Yoga Mala, he introduces first of all Surya Namaskare, to salute to the sun, mm. bow to the earth, salute to the sun, and if everyone was to do Surya Namaskare, they would have great physical benefits and mental benefits. Mental benefits because each vinyasa is to be counted. That brings the mind in. So you're steering back to the breath by counting it. You're making sound as you breathe through the, the, the nine yeah. breath movements, and your body obviously is riding that breath. So let's have, let's have a look and, and see if we can put this straight into understanding how it works. Surya Namaskare, let's write that first. So we have the name Surya Namaskara. It has nine vinyasa. Okay. And there's something special about Surya Namaskara, Stu. What would it be? Six. Six? I thought we had nine. What's number six? <laughs> <laughs> six 
It's uh, now I'm, I'm doing this to really put. torturing me deliberately. Have a look. He I'm initially useless. went up and da, 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 da. so that was him starting to recount his experience yeah. of Surya Namaskar. Mm. Can you tell me, Stu, where <laughs> no. where we are when we're taking five breaths? We're in. Um, you can do it in English. Yeah. One, Take one, two, two three, three, four. four. Five, six. 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 So in six, we are... In down dog. Down dog. So well, let's just call it down dog. Let's make that the flower. Okay, on our mala. Okay, on our mala, it's going to be the flower. There's going to be nine beads. Yeah, or seeds. Yep. So this one is the flower. Okay, so you got that. So let's yep. now have a look. Let's make a thread. So they're all strung on a thread. Mm -hmm. Just like this one, there is a guru bead. I call that the zero bead. So let's make that the zero bead. We have nine beads. One, two, three, four, five. So what did we say to Stu? What was the one where we have <laughs> five red? We have six, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, yep. let's take that out, join it up. We could count these, but we could count them in Sanskrit. So here's an opportunity for you also to practice, practice your, count, your, your Sanskrit. Let's go. Akam, Dwe, Trini, Chatwari, Pancha, Shat, Sapta, Ashto, Nava. So we're cycling around from zero. Each bead is to be counted and meditated on in Six is our flower. Okay, here's our, I'm drawing it like a, a lotus. Okay. Good job. So we can draw that by a lotus and let's have a look. Surya Namaskar A has nine beads, the downward dog, the sixth bead. Let's put it in there. There it is, a nice downward dog. Now, Stu did ask me, please mention some muscles, just so that, <laughs> just so that he could stay awake. <laughs> what are we stretching here, Stu? Hamstrings. Ah, hamstrings. straight away. <laughs> Fold for it. The hamstrings. What else? Calves. Calves. Back. It's back. a full body, full back line. Okay. So, of course, Stu is a, <laughs> an amazingly amazing body worker, and he's been working on my body in the <laughs> in the interim. This, however, Stu is to cultivate to cultivate foundation, to cultivate bunda, to cultivate the breath, to cultivate the focus. Here's the Bandha. We're looking towards Nabi Chakra, the navel center. Yeah. It's about lifting through the arms and the legs to support the spine off the floor. In the process, there yeah, are I side tell. benefits. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> and the side benefits are that you... Um, stretch the hamstrings and back <laughs> and so forth. Let's have a look then. So in, in using the, the stick figure, this is a head, this is a torso, legs, foot, arms, nose. Samastiti. Okay. So this is Samastiti. So Akam quite simply is an extension. Arms up, looking up. So notice that the nose showing head down, head up. Dway, I'm going to bend the knees. Take the hands to the floor, flat, look in. I've also put the hands forward of the feet, Stu, because if you haven't got those hamstrings stretched yes, out, gonna it's, be it's going to be difficult to and follow. And those arms may be straight. So Trini is 
a difficult one. This one is to push away from the floor head up. So you are not lifting like a ninja, you're actually pushing the floor away. Yeah. So this is supported then between the shoulders and the hips, again the spine. The spine is supported by foundation of four. We called this one downward dog. I call this short dog. Head down, short dog, head up. This one, sausage dog. <laughs> so they're all dogs. They're all dogs because they've all got four legs. Up dog. Okay, so can we see that? We've got Akam, Dway, Trini, Chatwari, Puncher. We could write those in. Akam, Dway, Trini, Chatwari. It's gone below your knee there. Just have a look. Head up, head down, head up, head down. Can you see a pattern arising? And this is a bone of contention for quite a few teachers. Is the head up, is the head down? I'll let you decide, Stu. Hmm. Head up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is puncher. Shat. So now Sapta is the same as Trini. Pushing away. You've jumped forward. You're in your hands. Yep. Oh, you've jumped back for a moment there. So this was short dog, short, short dog, dog sausage and a, dog. for a moment there you were a bird. You're jumping back, there's the mat. Yep. Okay, you're looking down. So for a moment your front legs yes. are now your bird's legs. Yes. And your leg legs have become your yeah. bird's wings. Yep. You go from a short dog to a bird to a long dog, sausage dog. You're not stew anymore. No, I left that a long time ago. Well, this is about, so the thing about mantra yep. or japara mantra is the mantra here is akam, dwe, mm. trini, chatwari. The body's doing the breath movement. Yep. And because the body's doing the breath movement, and you're f counting that, that's like a mantra. You're repeating it. And so what it's doing is it's starting to, s to protect the mind against its own unnecessary thoughts. Yeah. If you can go to that place, which this is a quantum leap, to go to subject specific, which is just being prana flowing into form and out of form. What do I mean by subject specific? You've got subject Matter? Yep. That would be yoga practice. Yep. Subject technical? Where the hands and feet go to support this body, to do the stretch of the hamstrings, to be aware of what my body's doing. Yep. And then to go deeper, to be subject specific, is just mantra and breath to take the mind to that place of infinite potential where you've met yourself stew human on the mat yep. and potentially can leave behind all the binding that you've created, all the limitations that you've created, how high you can jump, how fast you can run. That you're male. Yeah. If you're in the place where you are not locked into memory, emotions, associations, assumptions and projections, if you were in a place of neutrality, Stu, would you be male or female? I'd be both. You could be just infinite. Yeah. Are you, a, are you human or dog? And the biggest thing for me is, is that we humans try to emulate in the second series, for example, yeah. camels, peacocks. That's a quantum leap for a human body, arms and legs, to be... Yeah birds wings so we're actually we're actually going backwards we're having to go back to having a child mind and a child ability to play and have empathy with our imagination yeah 
And so here the mantra is taking you to a very special place that you're focusing in, focusing in. So ekam dwe trini chatwari pancha shat times five breaths without forgetting you're in shat. <laughs> yep. After the fifth breath, sapta, ashto is the same as dwe, a little forward bend. Nava is the same as ekam. Now, I've got Siri Namaskar B here for you. I've actually Special malas. made a, a mala. So we've now got the Japa mala. And if I then hold that one here, I made this one actually at uh, Art Juna. I bought, some <laughs> I bought some malas at Art Juna and then re-threaded them. This one, let's swap that one over to there and have a little quick look. This is zero. Ekam dwe trini chatwari pancha shat sapta. I made it slightly bigger. Yep. Ashto nava desha ekadasha. Made it slightly bigger. Duwadasha, tridasha, chatudasha. A great big one. Pancha dasha, shodasha, sapta dasha. What would that be? B. Yes, Surya yes. namaskar B. Mm. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Okay. I'm suffering here on your behalf, you realise, don't you? <laughs> he, he had no, no idea what to expect. So if you just hold that, just hold that in your hand. That I might manage. And then you can sort of get the idea. Now, this is the concept yeah. that Guruji had in his head. That each one to be counted yeah. As we're going and through. meditated on. And when you're saying meditated upon, how does that manifest itself in that vinyasa? What does meditate mean? <laughs> <laughs> All that meditation is, is concentration. So just single... Higher levels yeah. of concentration. We can only concentrate if we focus in on something. The, the thing that we focus in on could be outside of us. Right. And we focus in on it. Yeah. Without all of the other things distracting our mind. So when the mind's going out, it's distracted through all of the senses. And that could be bank account. It could be my girlfriend. It could be the coffee. It could be the tax bill. It could be all of those things. Yeah. That's distracted mind. But if I go into the breath and actually count that breath, so it's a dynamic meditation yeah. while I'm adding the movement to it. So to meditate on is mean I, I can't be thinking about my tax bill when I'm doing this. No. Yes, I can be thinking about foundation and hamstrings and back and being aware, so that's coming into subject technical. Yes. But the moment you go, oh, but his hamstrings are shorter than mine or longer than mine, then you're, out. then you're outside of the, yeah. okay? It's not, in the, it's not in the subject technical. Yeah. You've gone into envy, jealousy, one of the poisons in the heart that's mm. restricting you. So I think Stu did mention that this was a <coughs> um, Christmas, Christmas presentation. Christmas special. And the last time I met with Stu, he did mention something about my beard. And <laughs> <laughs> we wanted some special he, Christmas beads. He wanted some special. So t today I have, um, this is the sort of person I am. <laughs> I am a bit mad and I don't mind about it. So today I will present with you my, uh, my mala for Christmas. It's taken two years to get this length. I've already given away one, so there's one on the way, Stu, <laughs> and that was to Ming from China. Uh, and, and I had to replace it with a white right one. one. So this is Surya Namaskare. Here it is here on the board, two-dimensional graphic. Now here is a physical mala. I could count. This is Samasthiti, Ekam, Dwe, Trini, Chatwari, Pancha, Shat. There's my <laughs> Christmas bead. The red one is Shat. Sapta. Ashto Nava. There's the nine. If I loop it back, that would be Surinamaskar A. Now that might be. <laughs> You'd have trouble with your foundation. <laughs> I was trying to do that. Okay. That might be the one thing that 
all of a sudden a penny drops for you. Yeah. Um, to be inspired or to be, oh, taken out of the normal box of thinking. The Dead Poet Society, Robin Williams, beautiful mm. movie. What it was was he jumped up on that desk and he went, Captain, my captain. And he had that class behind him yeah. because he wanted to share, he wanted to, to, to um, be of interest to the students. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm going through the different mediums of trying to present something to make some clarity because the work that Guruji did is, is a very special work. He welcomed me into my soul with Maitri, which was love and kindness. And he accepted with me with all my stuff, as he did everybody. Following close to that is Karuna, compassion. And compassion for Guruji was having a burning desire to help you bring yourself out of suffering. And the method that he had was a breathing system called Counted Method, Tristana, a trifocus, which is vinyasa, and here it is explained on the board. So just as we had a Surya Namaskar A, B, then for example, here's Trikonasana. Very simple. The guru bead, zero. It has five vinyasa, akam, dwe, the right side posture, trini, come back up, left side chatwari and pancha. That would be the mala for Trikonasana A. Mm. So what we could do, Stu, is just lay them all out and there we would have yeah. the beginnings of a bigger mala. Yes. Uh, have this just purely for the fun the shocking value, and it might be a way that all of a sudden, ah, now I'm understanding. Yeah. So let's do this again, just for um, Trikonasana, and then we can leave it, Stu. Yeah. Yeah? How about that? We can go on to something else. This is the way it works. The pattern is quite simply, everything has a name, so there's form, name and form, it's Trikonasana. Let's call it A. It has five Aye. vinyasa. Yeah. It has what Guruji would say in his yoga mala, two states. He calls them states. Okay. States which I would call the flower. He has two, two states, two and four. So states two and four, you have a right side and, and a left, left side. Yeah. They're all strung on the thread of the breath. They all have samastadihi. So every asana starts at samastadihi, journeys in and out and back to samastadihi. It's almost like a GPS. You download where you're going, how many turns you've got, yeah. where you'll spend some time having five breaths and returning back to samastadihi. So if we draw it again, it's quite simple. Let's do the mala, draw the guru bead, and put samastiti there. Okay, we might just put tassels there. Five vinyasa, one, but hang on, two and four, two and four are the states. Two, three, four, five. Now we could, Stu, have a box. Now someone out there might go, oh, I'm going to make these. You could. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of malas in that box. You could have a whole box of beads and a lot of acums. Yep. What's really interesting is acum is the same as trini and is the same as puncher. Dwe, right side triangle. Chatwari, 
left side triangle. Make these flowers. And there you have the mala for Trikonasana Ray. Ah, which is there? Which is that one? Okay. And in Guruji Jogamala, every asana has a name, a number, and states. And it repeats all the way through. So it's not just Surya Namaskar A that's counted. No. It's not just Surya Namaskar A and B that's counted. It's the entire practice. That takes some amazing concentration. And for 60 years of Guruji's teaching life, he counted. And so sometimes you've asked me, Stu, what's it like when the, the time back in the 80s with Guruji? Yeah. In Mysore, there was Guruji and eight students in the room maximum. We were all practicing at our individual rates unless he was taking two or three of us through at a time. Right. For example, he took Dina, John, myself, and Lino through the second series together. We separated at Kapotasana. Dina carried on going, especially <laughs> when we got to the Ekapadas. Yeah? Lino and I were held back a little bit. But most of the times you were practicing at your own rate. When Guruji was with you, no matter which vinyasa you were on, he would call that one out. He would be saying, Chatwari Panchashat Sapta. Yeah. Ashto. So he and wanted it in your head. He wanted, he wanted it. He was passing the mantra over. Yeah. Just like a TM goes, Ekam Dwe Trini Chatwari. Here was a generic mantra, Ekam Dwe Trini. Yeah. When you receive Ekam Dwe Trini, that's for you to go into your head, Ekam Dwe Trini. And so, mantra initially by voice, in a whisper, think it, and then you'll hear it. So in my own practice, I stand at Summer Steady and I hear Akam, Dwe, Trini, Chitwari, Pancha. I've counted it so many times for myself and for my students. Yeah. The mantra is in there. And you hear it. I hear it. So people that are wanting to start more with the, the counting, do they want to say it to start with in their, say it, but not verbally, but, but or do they want to try and well, think it? Well, this morning I was doing a, a little private class with Eva from yeah. Palm Grove and Better, and I had them counting first in English. Right. Tomorrow we're going to be counting in Sanskrit, but they were counting aloud right. to program it. Yeah. Okay, so you can repeat it, Stu. Mm. You, can, you can do Surya Namaskar A aloud, do Suri Namaskar A in a whisper yeah. and then try it thinking it, thinking it. in your head. Yeah? Hmm. And so it, it depends on your personality. Some people can go straight to thinking it, yeah. which is hard. Yeah, that wouldn't be me. <laughs> especially if you, especially if you uh, have learned a whole entire first series, second series, starting on the third series. And I get students that come to me that are doing third series, second series, and do not know the count. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. And then you think, well, how many postures do I have to learn? The names, the numbers, the states. If you were to learn them from day one. So much easier. It would be so much easier. So with Ever today, we did Surya Namaskar A, Surya Namaskar B, Padangustasana, Padahastasana, and Trikonasana. That's all we did. We repeated it. We went through. And tomorrow I'll build up on that. Yeah. They're doing their homework today, so it's about doing homework. Learning to count, learning to breathe, learning to count, breathe and move. Yeah. And as you say, that doesn't leave much room for other thoughts, which is a great thing. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to process some stuff. It's not denying the fact that we have stuff. Yeah. It's the fact that we get caught up in the stuff 
And the, that being caught up in that misidentification limits what we can do. It limits us accessing our potential. And this same circular idea, I know you like to think of the, the progression or the stages within Ashtanga as a whole, not so much in a linear way. Let's have a look at it to linear. Linear would be a line. Yeah. Ashta. Ashto is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We could go Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratihara, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. The the Indian systems of philosophy, especially the Sankhya system of philosophy, loves to list things. <laughs> so we could go Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratihara, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. It's also taught like this in the sense that we could talk about them as being, whoops, <laughs> Steps. Yeah. Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratihara, Dharana. Forget about Dhyana and Samadhi. They're at the top of the stair. This is sort of like the stairway to heaven. So this is where, the, where it's a bit of fun. Guruji said to me, you Westerner, you start on the third step, on the third limb, Asana. And I went, yes, I've been promoted. <laughs> and jumped up the steps. Right up the ladder <laughs> to the third step. And then he, he drilled into my ego. <laughs> and he said, then you go back. <laughs> A bit like snakes and ladders, yes. you know, the serpent. <laughs> yeah. Go back. You, then you go back and start Yama. What does he mean by all of that? So again, spending quite a lot of time contemplating and writing notes. I also heard, learned from, from Nancy Gilgoff that she said to Guruji, Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga, 99% practice, 1% theory, practice, practice. And when you share this practice or teach, all is coming. So we need to teach the things we most need to learn ourselves. Yeah. It's been a privilege, Stu, to talk with you all the times that we've talked, because each time we talk together, something new comes up. Each time you share that in a class with a student, something new comes up. Each time you recount an experience and relive the experience, it's a different experience. Yeah. It's a totally different experience. And it's a bit like you massaging my body. Each time you massage my body, you begin to learn more about more my body. And, yeah. and so the, the practice is the same. Let's just have a little look. I'm going to draw another wheel. Instead of doing it linear, let's go make it, just divide it quite simply into eight. If we simply divide it into eight, there we have our eight limbs. I'm going to go and put asana, the third limb, right at the top because I misunderstood 99% practice, 1% theory. I was a Nike man, you know, I really was a Nike man. I put a tick beside Ashtanga because there was only 1% theory. I picked up uh, Iyengar's Light on Yoga. And within the first sentence, too, I was having to look to the back. <laughs> Every sentence, I was having to go to the back, to the glossary, to look, out what, look up what the word meant. Yeah. So in the end, I just went, let's just look at the pictures. Looking at the pictures would be my 1%. That was very naive. <laughs> I thought 1% theory, here I found a practice that there was no theories at all, just do it. And so there I did. If, if we make this a graph, Stu, this is actually a, a, a graph, but I'm going to put all my focus up here on, on asana. 99%. Yep. 
not quite a hundred percent. Well, maybe some of us put it a hundred and ten percent. Yeah, some of us probably practice a hundred and ten percent. Even more. Even yeah. more. I'm going to make a little link here of the spokes of this Ashtanga wheel and put the center, the hub. That would be an out of balanced wheel. It would be <laughs> very uncomfortable. <laughs> and here, at 110%, even more uncomfortable. Practicing twice a day to get there twice as fast, you end up twice as long being in the bath with twice as much Epsom salts. <laughs> <laughs> you start hurting your body. Okay? So, let's just for a moment reflect on those that only have a seating practice. Yeah. If all you do is sit, and I have a friend teacher in Korea, Vayu has now got some of the monks, the Korean monks coming to him because yeah. they need some physical asana. Yeah. As uh, massage bodies of people that just do meditation as well, and they're quite often very solid and very constricted. Yeah, so when so I was here, here, Guruji said to me, that man is only exercising, and he was pointing to mm. me. Only exercising? No meditation. If all you're doing is meditating, yeah. you've got no posture. Yeah. There has to be a balancing out. So let's just play with this a little bit. If we play with this a little bit, let's have a look at 1% theory. The very first 1% theory that I learned was posture, free breathing, looking place. We could translate posture, free breathing looking place to asana, pranayama, pratihara, or bandha, ujjayi, drishti. Mm. So if we were calling this the Ashtanga eight limbs, that would be pranayama, and that would be pratihara. Okay, so pranayama, pratyahara. Let's give them some value. If I then have a look at my wheel, can you see now the wheel is a little bit more balanced? Yep. As an aside, that's called a sukha. The hub the hole that the axle goes through, it's in the uh, ancient Vedic scriptures, uh, the, the chariot refers to chariots when the sukha is dead center, the chariot runs swiftly, smooth, and the ride is comfortable. That is one of the meanings of sukha. So just remember that, sukha is a hole. This hole is not center, this chariot wheel, Ashtanga chariot wheel, is getting a little more balanced than when it was up there. Okay, so this could be posture, free breathing, looking place. We could call that drishti, we could call that ujjayi, we could call that bandha. The 1% all of a sudden is starting to expand a little bit more. Okay, there's many, there's really many 1%. Practice, 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 99% practice 1% theory. There's a lot of theory. The subject, it's just too great to decode all in one day. Yeah. Let me tell you that later. Let's get on the mat, get doing. So he got me doing, and that what actually meant was the asana became action. I took some action to meet myself. Meeting myself daily meant I was confronted with who I was. And by doing it 110%, twice as much Epsom salts in the bath, I was looking at, well, what am I doing? First you start on asana, he said, on the third limb, then you go back. For every action is a reaction. 
the reaction is you start to look at yama. Yama for me, what does it mean to me, Stu? Yama just means relationship. Relationship to yourself? To myself first. Mm. Before I can really relate to anybody else out there, I've really mm. got to get these codes into me. Yeah. That I'm not going to harm myself. I'm not going to tell mistruths to myself. Yeah. That's why I'm here, I'm meeting myself. Yeah. I'm not going to steal from myself. Most important thing is time. So yeah. then you start to re-look at your asana yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. So what happens is f you start then from action and reaction, there is then the words cause and effect. effect. Guruji was so clever in his simplicity. Cause and effect, karma. Seeds, counting seeds, yeah. counting seeds, counting postures, counting the vinyasas into or out of the whole mala becomes cause and effect. We could just look at it here. If this is a cause, yeah. the cause of free breathing, I mean, sorry, the cause of um, posture, posture is free breathing. If you then make pranayama or free breathing a cause, the effect is focus. Yeah. If you have focus, you're then going to get concentration. So when you said you start looking at yourself, the, that's of course you start asking, who am I? So niyama. So what does it mean to me? me that's all about cleansing, purification. It's about clearing out all of the stuff that I'm not. Mm. Learning to relate, then learning to study. Study who I am, where I am, what is this amazing thing? As you said, if you start looking at how you write, your whole asana understanding is going to change. Yeah. So very clever. A bit like the Matrix, Stu. In the Matrix, when, when Neo comes in, he's been pulled out of the, the, the power, power plant. He's, all his plugs have been sealed off, and he's just got the one. And uh, uh, Tank's going to be his operator and program him. And he says... They, this is just boring protocol shit, he says. Let's get on to something more interesting. Let's start off with combat training. Quite it's almost a third program. The third yeah. program is asana. Let's do something interesting. If we do something interesting, we might want to stare back to the breath. Yeah. Stare back to breath-body movement. So by going into asana, he's asking you to do this already. It's drawing, that's why I draw it into the wheel. Yeah. Now, if you take my hand, it's bent, you pull it, it straightens. Yeah. Okay, push it, it bends. Pull it, it straightens. At the moment, let's have a look at this line. This is a bit like my hand, elbow, shoulder. Yeah. I've got to pull this a little bit. If I put some start on asana, go back, start yama, if I start pulling on that, it's going to pull this this way, especially if I start pulling yeah. here. So what's going to happen is we're going to get these five spokes. These five spokes now are really starting to be balanced. So when Guruji says Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga is 99% practice, practice Practice, practice, do your practice, and all is coming. He mentions the word practice about five times. <laughs> so we can focus on these five practices. Yeah. If we focus on these five practices, then something really starts to change. Guruji calls uh, Pratyahara a looking place. 
because when he first translates it, the, the, the official translation of Pratihara is sense withdrawal. You're withdrawing the senses from the objects of the senses that take your mind out or distract your mind. And so Pratihara is not to cut off from the senses, but to turn all of the senses in on one thing. And in this case, we're turning it on, on the breath. Yeah. So when you turn and focus in, now when Guruji met me with Maitri with love and kindness, with that big open smile, he had such a heart. And in one theory class he said, John Scott, where's God? And I was lost trying to catch up to where he was. And he, before I could answer him, because I was sort of back paddling, he went, touched the wall and said, this is God. And he went, this is God. And then he pointed at me, it was like a, a little uh, Lagu Vajrasana, like a thunderbolt of lightning. He went, you are God. And then he said, I am God. And he said, everybody to the whole audience, yeah. everybody's God. And so for Guruji, Pratihara is seeing God in all. So on the day that he welcomed me, he was welcoming God into his house. Yeah from the very beginning. And so, he was in his sukha. What a, if sukha is a hole which is a looking place? Let's go back a little bit. If you gave a hole to a child, yes. what would a child do with a hole? Stick something in it. Stick something in it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> what else would a child do? Put it in their mouth. Or <laughs> yeah. look through it. Look through it. So an axle either goes through the hole or you look through the hole. Now when my hole was up here at 99% practice, all I was seeing was just a little bias, John's bias of those beautiful hamstrings that we're stretching, <laughs> not seeing yeah. the whole. So Sukha, as we, I just mentioned a different sort of a whole. <laughs> Sukha is when you're looking place, or let's say another word for whole is aperture. Another word, aperture. What does aperture refer to? Aperture refers to the leaves of the camera lens that we're looking through. And Nick's got a special aperture, a certain setting to look through. And so we could have a very tiny little hole, heart size, like the Grinch at Christmas time. Yeah. The great story of the Grinch. Nick might not know this, the Grinch story, but in the West there's this Grinch. That's a Dr. Zeus uh, a little story. And the Grinch is a mean old guy up at the top of the mountain and he goes down on Christmas Eve and steals all the presents. And he, and, and he just hears the, or the Who's down in Whoville they are not crying and upset. In fact, what they end up doing is they come together and they sing. They sing and, they, and what they make out is that Christmas is going to happen regardless of the presents. And when, when the Grinch uh, discovers that, all of a sudden his, hope, his heart opens up and the, the Grinch's heart is one size bigger. And so just like that, our center, our sukha, our heart, can, can open up. And that's very much where Guruji is. So Sukha, Dukkha, this is Dukkha. Dukkha is the paired complement, the opposite to bliss, love, joy, comfortable, is pain, suffering. And so let's just have a now look at how this can evolve. In my naive days, I put the asana right at the top. Let's just clear these out for simplicity. Make a nice one here. Now, 
I think in the last interview we had, Stu, I shared with you that you asked me about my body and I said, yes, yeah. my body hurts. Yeah. Life happens. We have our ups and our downs. But what stays consistent for me in my life is my practice. So now instead of putting asana at the top of my wheel, I put asana as my foundation stone. Yeah. It's, it's the start of my day. It's the thing that holds everything together. Let's make it a pyramid. It's my foundation is asana. So let's go back this way. This one must be niyama and this one stays as yama. Yama, niyama, asana, pranayama, pratihara. Okay, so we take those out. What we then have from Pratihara, which is drawing the senses in. So I believe that you can focus on these five. Sometimes it's talked about four external and five uh, four internal. Mm -hmm. But for me, Pratihara can be very external. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking out to the sound of my breath. I'm counting my breath. Everything revolving around the focus of the breath is my Pratihara. I'm looking in through the looking places so that I can hear that breath and be with the breath. With this sukha in the center, talking about these as being seeds. These are seeds, Stu. Yeah. Dhyana, I mean dharana, dhyana, samadhi. Concentration, meditation, Samadhi, let's just call that absorption, or the point at which you are no longer separate self, important self, identified self, selfish self. You have found your selfless self when you're in service to others. These are seeds. Those seeds will blossom from practice, practice, practice. These seeds blossom planting more seeds in your internal garden. They are going to be the fruit of your practice. So the fruit of your practice, if you practice these five limbs, the other three limbs are the fruit of the practice. Let's leave it there. Stay cool. I call that the Ashtanga wheel, eight limbs, all inspired through the work with Sri K. Patabi Joyce, Guruji, his book, The Yoga Mala. And today I'm sitting here with Stu at Purple Valley, and it's a great place where people come together. Thanks so much, John. And think, you know, we're all going to get so much out of this. It just to give some clarity, doesn't it? You know, and also, uh, like you were saying before, sometimes things will then stick in your mind when they're presented in different ways. Exactly. So it's just, yeah. Out of the box, onto the wall, yeah. out of the book, into your own notebook. Yeah. And the thing, Stu, is that everyone should have a yoga diary. You could start your own yoga diary today. You guys too. And have a play. Yeah. There's Sanskrit. We're learning a language. Slowly, slowly we learn names, numbers. We can write those numbers down. We can start counting those numbers. Most of the teachers that produce work really are just selling the notes of their experience. Mm. And every one of you has a story to unfold. Every one of you has a story to tell, and you could do that in your own notebook. Yeah, man. Thank you. Thanks, John. That's so cool. <laughs> cool.